Just to start this off right, how about on the count of three, a go Cougs. One, two, three. Go All right. Um, it's really a pleasure uh, for me to do our formal introduction of Ann McCoy as our now permanent athletic director. Well, first, I'd like to uh, wish everyone good afternoon and welcome. Uh, so thrilled that so many people came to spend some of their afternoon with us on a beautiful sunny day here in Pullman. You know, largely at these types of events, someone comes in fresh, they've never been at the school, they offer a vision, and that's all wonderful. Uh, but I have to say, having a really unique perspective of having been here, I already have gotten to know all of the people in our department and on our campus. I've gotten to know many of our fans, donors, a lot of our, you know, student athletes. Um, and so... I feel like that gives me a unique perspective, I hope, to really hit the ground running with all of the unique and, um, you know, really wonderful opportunities we have before us. As the Pac-12's remaining members, Washington State University and Oregon State University, began rebuilding the conference, WSU President Kirk Schultz announced in June 2024 that Ann McCoy was the university's new permanent athletics director. McCoy hit the ground running as interim AD earlier in the year, since she has worked for WSU Athletics since 2001 in almost every department. She faces a lot of challenges in her new role, along with some exciting opportunities. Welcome to the Washington State Magazine podcast. We connect you to Washington State University, campus life, research, and fascinating alumni. I'm Larry Clark, editor of the magazine. I met with Ann McCoy in the athletic director's office on the WSU Pullman campus to chat about stepping in as AD, the future of Pac-12 and Cougar sports, the student-athlete experience, and how Washington State fans can play their part in the bright new future of WSU athletics. Hi, Ann. Welcome to the Washington State Magazine podcast. I'm glad you could join us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, you stepped into this role as the athletics director. It's very exciting. And you've been in a lot of different positions with WSU Athletics. Um, how does it feel now that you've been athletic director for a while, a few months now? Yeah, it feels really, um, really amazing. Honestly, a little surreal, uh, to your point of having been at Washington State University for a long time. Um, I guess this is my 24th fall here in Pullman at Washington State University. And to think of my journey of kind of where I came into Washington State University and my role and responsibilities to sitting here today, uh, I don't know that I would have ever imagined at that point in time that, you know, fast forward to, you know, 24 falls later and this is where I'd be. But uh, it really has been amazing. And, and honestly, there's, there's nowhere else I'd rather be in any other position right now. That's great. And you stepped in at a time of big transition, a lot going on. Can you talk a little bit about some of these changes, especially with the Pac-12 and what's been happening? Yes. I mean, honestly, even before uh, Pat's departure had been kind of a uh, really tumultuous year with a lot of changes and a lot of different things happening, both at Washington State University, but uh, athletics, but certainly, you know, college athletics overall. And I think, you know, with the changes with the Pac-12 and, you know, the, the changes here at Washington State University, it, it really has felt like um, a, a great opportunity to kind of, you know, roll up my sleeves and, and, and really gather, you know, everyone around in our department who's so committed at kind of really having everything, you know, move forward and, and have our future be really bright. It's been a, a year of a lot of unknowns. So to be here right now, knowing more about what our future will be and that the future indeed is really bright with the Pac-12 conference, you know, rebuilding and kind of reimagining itself. Uh, it just feels really, really terrific compared to, you know, some of the darker days of this past year. Yeah, they certainly were dark. You know, as a person who enjoys watching Cougar sports, it's been very nerve wracking. So I, I know I'm personally excited. And I've heard from a lot of other Cougs out there. They're excited about these new teams that are coming in. Can you talk a little bit about how they're coming in and how that's going to maybe change the way the Pac-12 looks? Yeah, certainly. I mean, first, I'm glad to hear you're excited and share the enthusiasm because I think you're right. It's harder for people to kind of wrap their minds around 10 potential options versus the one we know. And the fact that it's both something familiar in some ways, but also something new and exciting all in one place, I think is really unique. And the new schools coming in, are, are they have so much excitement, I think, for 
what we, uh, you know, at Washington State and or us at Washington State and the folks at Oregon State have known all along, I think, that the Pac-12, you know, is a really special brand and it's something worth fighting for. And I think they're excited to join that fight and really help build, I think, something that can adapt and grow with where college athletics is heading because it really, it, it's taking, you know, 100 years of history but with the, this huge overhaul, kind of the unique opportunity to also reinvent itself into what will be sustainable for college athletics going forward. So I, I think one thing that was really appealing about the schools coming in are, are not only, I, I think, is, was not their excitement, uh, which was certainly part of it, but also their their feeling of um, investment in athletics and understanding how college athletics can really help. I think, fit into the strategic mission of a university. You know, certainly it's it's part of a larger mission, but can be the vehicle of really helping uh, promote that. And I feel like all of the schools uh, that will be part of the Pac-12, I think, really understand that and, and, and see the value in college athletics, but also, you know, kind of the appropriate positioning of it, too. Uh, yeah, that's really exciting to hear. You know, I like to hear that about college athletics fitting within to the university and the mission of the university. And maybe particularly true for places like WSU and OSU that are land grant universities. Yeah, I think very much so. I think part of the really amazing part of being at a land grant university is really that feeling of kind of service uh, to the state, to the community, to the, you know, and really and beyond. I mean, you know, so many great things that really uh, not only service the state of Washington or this community, but really are, you know, amazing, you know, breakthroughs worldwide, which are so exciting. And I think the fact that athletics can be a way to help just really maybe be part of a great student experience or something that continues to bring people together on behalf of Washington State University, it can really also help propel all of the amazing things happening here into more of the public eye, which I think is really exciting. I think it fits well with what we do as a department, I think. Yeah, and I think we really see that at some of the games, too, you know, where you highlight faculty or you talk about research and connect it to really what's community building. You know, like games, that's how I see them. You go to a football game, you go to a volleyball game, any sporting event, and it's that community that's built. It's very exciting. I agree. I mean, that's always, I think, what's been so appealing to me about being in college athletics. and, And honestly, one of the reasons I've stayed at Washington State as long as I have is that feeling of community partnership and whether the community is, you know, within the campus or within the community or beyond, you know, really uh, being a place that people can come together or good natured office conversations between, you know, the Huskies and the Cougars of the, you know, the world or families that have had generations come here, but yet they all come back for homecoming or whatever it might be. I just think it's a great way to your point of really helping foster and build a a community uh, that's really special. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of Huskies and Cougars, I could see some future rivalries building, too, with very the much so. new Pac-12. I think um, very true. I mean, the amazing number of Cougars that we saw down at the Boise State game, it's um, you know really important to develop those new rivalries and relationship with other schools, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. And even Gonzaga now. Very much so. Like that has been one of the really exciting parts for me about having our many of our sports be affiliate members in the WCC this year is really to be able to play Gonzaga and other um, schools that maybe perhaps we would only play in a you know one sport here or there. But I just think for the entirety of the eastern side of the state of Washington, I think it's really great to have those rivalries develop more and to be competing against each other on a more consistent basis. I think will be really great because I think we have fans that really are both, you know, they may live in Spokane and, you know, or have family that went to Gonzaga or family that go here. And I think it's, it, it's exciting. So kind of looking ahead a little bit, what do you see, what's your vision for the PAC 12 and, and for maybe specifically WSU athletics in the next couple of years? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that always has been really important to me, and I think is really important to Washington state, to Oregon state and uh, the PAC 12 is really continuing to recognize the educational nature of what we do, even though we do, you know, we do education through sport and just really working on student athletes as and valuing them as entire 
people that are here as students, but also individuals that will go back into their communities or go into the, you know, workforce or whatever they're going to do kind of in their, you know, quote unquote adult life for the rest of time is that to really continue to focus on student athlete well-being and everything, certainly from a competitive nature is important because it's what we do relative to athletics but not losing sight of the student athletes as, you know, entire people. And I think that's one thing the Pac-12 has always been amazing at is really, you know, including student leadership in kind of the governance structure or really looking at things where we can continue to grow student athletes into just people that feel like they have had an amazing, well-rounded experience at their universities. And I think that's one thing the Pac-12 does really well and I'm afraid could be could be falling by the wayside a little with a lot of the other changes that are happening. So I think for the Pac-12 to be able to both adapt and roll in those new changes and opportunities for students without losing sight of the fact that student athletes should be seen as more than just students or athletes, but as well-rounded people, I think that's, I'm excited about that opportunity to continue to have the Pac-12 flourish that way. Yeah, that's really great to hear too, because I think most of us understand that Almost all student athletes are going to go out and they're going to be working in banks mm-hmm. and in media and dozens and dozens of other professions mm-hmm. out there. And, yes, you know. it's very true. I mean, I think the saying that was you know coined a while back is that they're they're going to go pro in something other than sports. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's yeah. it's true. You know, right? very very true. So you want them to be as well prepared, but to have as many great experiences too. I think while they're in college. So sure, absolutely. You know, and you mentioned some of these changes that are happening and it feels like it's been a real roller coaster the last few years, especially, you know, with uh, with COVID, of course, NIL, conference realignment. So how do you personally, but then also Cougar Athletics, really keep focused and keep keep your eye on the ball, so to speak? I think, you know, we've talked a lot about all of these new things that are coming in college athletics, to your point, or that have come. And I feel like for us, what's really important um, and kind of how I'm wired, I would say, as a person um, is just remembering, you know, the core of who you are at your soul and what's important, you know, and really staying focused on that. And that there have always been things that, you know, Washington State is going to have a different path in, I would say, than a lot of other schools. And we just need to remember that that continues to be okay, And that we, you know, we double down on what's important to us, what fits within our value system, what fits within our priorities and really not get too worried about getting sucked into the fray of everything else that's going on. And again, certainly a ton of great opportunities that, you know, we will want our student athletes and our coaches and staff to be able to, to really lean into, but that other things may just not really fit with who Washington State, you know, really is or who we want to be and realizing that it's okay to focus on what makes us strong and special and not trying to fit ourselves into the, you know, the same cookie cutter mold of every other school. And so I think that's going to be really important going forward is just remembering, you know, what's important to us, uh, you know, a world-class education, a world-class student-athlete experience, and really helping student-athletes excel at all parts of their lives, the competitive parts, the academic parts, but as I mentioned also, you know, kind of the human parts, and just really remembering that that's the core of what we do, and everything else should fit into that. So is this something that you and, and the coaches and other people tell students when they are considering coming here and playing for the Cougs? I think you're right on. I mean, I think it really is the um, positive environment that, uh, you know, a student can come be part of. And so whether that's maybe one thing that's important to the prospective student athlete that may be the academic programs, the, the facilities, the coaching, the what does nutrition look like? What does the strength conditioning look like? All those pieces, you know, so knowing they'll have all the tools they need to be successful as students and athletes. But I think then for the families or the, you know, the advisors in their lives, whoever that may be, is to understand that they're going to come to a place where it's a positive environment to be part of. And I think that they can feel that they're part of something. They're not just coming to Washington State as a XYZ, you know, sport athlete. They're coming to be members of the Washington State and Pullman community, which I think for a lot of student athletes, 
you know, at the time they may not realize that's what really drew them here when they came on a visit, but there's something that they noticed when they left here and they just like, gosh, I can't put my finger on it. It was just, it felt right. It felt good. It felt, you know, welcoming. It felt like, you know, there was a lot to offer. I think, I think that's very important. And it's something that our coaches really do talk a lot about to prospective student athletes and their families, uh, because it is something I think that needs to be a priority for people that come here. Well, and it's certainly, you know, as a member of the community, I see that. I see the athletes out, you know, doing reading in the elementary schools or marching in the Lentil Festival Parade and these other kind of community events. And that's very exciting. I think that's something that we as community members uh, appreciate as well. Oh, that's great to hear. I mean, it is. It's uh, the, and, and the student athletes love it, to be honest. I mean, they love being part of the community and being able to get to know uh, members of the community better. Certainly. Uh, speaking of student athlete experience, we've had some new buildings um, on campus. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening with the facilities? Yeah, absolutely. It's been really an exciting time. Um, You know, and I feel like even though many of these facilities are literally years in the making relative to planning and fundraising, the timing of them coming online couldn't be any better relative to, again, just kind of that continued positive momentum. Um, So the Taylor Sports Complex, uh, the ribbon cutting will be um, at the homecoming game. And so Uh, this fall that will come online for our sports to use um, and it replaces the much needed but I feel like (laughs) much maligned indoor (laughs) practice facility uh, which was a great temporary facility that lasted aka the bubble the bubble exactly (laughs) Um, so the Taylor Sports Complex um, you know 100% privately funded through amazingly supportive and generous donors um, will be a great space for many of our programs to use I think a lot of people think of it oh you know for football but it's I mean it's football it's soccer it's track it's baseball I mean so many of our sports use that facility for a variety of things whether it be potential air quality considerations in the fall, whether it be, you know, inclement snowy weather in the, you know, winter and spring, it'll be just such an amazing facility and it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it looks so much nicer on the outside, certainly, but to walk inside that facility for the first time, uh, even if you'd never been in the bubble, to walk in it for the first time, it just is really, um, it's amazing. Like it just has such a great feel and it's so bright and welcoming and usable that I think the student athletes will really love it. Um, And then the Champion Center uh, will come online in January and it will be just, you know, back to our previous conversation about really wanting to care for our student athletes as, you know, whole individuals and people. Really, it will help with academic advising and support and mental health services. And, you know, uh, we kind of have our student athlete development between that facility and then still some space here uh, in the Bowler Complex. But it's going to be such a great place for all of our athletes to go for really the the non-athletic portions of their their lives, which will be really terrific um, and very Uh, you know, very support based, but also a place that whether it be, you know, a computer lab or just spaces, you know, a lounge to go study in, there'll there'll be, you know, study rooms and tutor space and, uh, and the proximity will be terrific because it's right here, easy access, and we'll bring all of that staff centrally into one space. So that one, again, you know, 100% privately funded um, through really generous supporters and yeah, we couldn't be more excited. And I know, um, I feel badly because I know there are diehard racquetball player out there that were not happy with the racquetball courts coming offline. Um, but I think when people have a chance to, to see the space and know it is space that is literally going to u- be used every hour of the day, every day of the week, and really get put to really good use for our students, I think that hopefully people uh, will understand in the end. And, and just even brightening up that whole corner um, for campus, I think, with all of the windows and just the, again, exterior you know, aesthetics of it, I think it's going to be really exciting all the way around. Those are some exciting changes. Yeah, very much so. What message do you want to get out to Cougar Nation? Oh boy. I, you know, first of all, thank you. Honestly, Cougar Nation is amazing. And I feel like through some dark times and just some unknown times, a lot of folks have really just stayed the course and continued to buy season tickets or individual game tickets and continued to donate and, and just generally continue to be supportive. Um, so I, that's my first 
thought or reaction that comes to mind is thank you. Um, but then honestly, also too, like we need everybody more than ever, because I also realize there's some folks that, you know, are waiting to see kind of what happens or where things land or are disillusioned with college athletics generally, or want to wait and see, you know, who's going to be in the conference or some of these sorts of things. And what we've been trying to tell people is, is the best way we can really ensure a bright future for Washington State athletics is to be involved now when that foundation is going to continue to be laid. And it's to be able to tune into the broadcast so we get great viewership numbers, which helps our media value later, and to continue to, you know, support, you know, not only athletics, but any programs at Washington State that people feel passionate about. But I mean, just really to not be on the proverbial sidelines that right now more than ever, we feel like people left us, you know, uh, kind of behind in the Pac-12 but the worst thing that can happen is for us to leave ourselves behind, I feel like, a little bit. And so that's what I want to be sure people continue to be invested, involved, and excited because a lot of people are still working really hard, I think, for all the things that make being a Cougar great. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, I totally agree. We don't want to be on the sidelines. feels like we have some real really good momentum going into this year. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I feel like people feel kind of a renewed sense of like, this is the next chapter. Like this is really, again, kind of a tumultuous year, a lot of uncertainty, but boy, now we know and the fall has started and, you know, we got to look forward to this fall, unlike last fall. And we really got to do what we love to do and, you know, around athletics, which is celebrate our fall sports and get ready for the winter sports and look forward to the spring sports and just see people come together. And it's exciting. I feel like there really is a good excitement and energy, um, which, which makes my heart happy. Yeah, I agree. You know, it does feel like there's, you know, a lot going on. Um, is there anything else that you're really excited about in the next year, two years? Boy, that's a good question. I, you know, more than anything, I think I'm just excited um, to continue building on the momentum that, you know, we're seeing right now. And so I think that there's not one particular thing necessarily. I think it's just, honestly, it's a little like persevering. And in two years, maybe having some people go, wow, like, look at Washington State go, you know? So I think for me, as maybe nebulous as that sounds, that's what would I would look forward to or be excited about, as opposed to people talking about, oh, the two schools left behind, or, you know, we're working on this new conference or whatever. I think at the end of the day, for people to go, wow, Washington State really, you know, stuck to who they were and leaned in on everything that was great and have something amazing to show for it. Well, thanks so much for your time today and uh, for talking to me. Of course. No, I'm happy to. Happy to any time. And go Cougs. Go Cougs. Thanks for listening to the Washington State Magazine podcast. You can read more WSU stories and listen to podcast episodes at magazine.wsu.edu. We'd love to hear your ideas for future episodes, too. If you enjoy the podcast, recommend us to your friends and like us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. The press conference audio at the beginning is courtesy of WSU Athletics. Our podcast music is by WSU Emeritus Professor and Composer, Greg Yazanitsky.